Uh, but they look particularly strong in the forwards with Hastings, McGahn, Batiste, Tessman, Simpkins and Brown. They're coached by Arthur Beetson. Western Suburbs, they've had to make a couple of changes. The hooker is Fivey, Grant Fivey, in for Alan Faller. And Gary McFarlane comes into the second row to replace John Bilberger. They're captain tonight by Lee Crooks, Bruiser Clark, in hospital, although I'm told we'll be allowed out to watch the match. And on the bench tonight, two other Englishmen, Derek Fox and John Henderson. They, of course, are coached by Steve Goshen. And it doesn't matter which way you look at 1986. From Western Suburbs' point of view, it's been a pretty good year. Well, Bill and Graham will join me in just a few moments' time for the fourth quarter final, and we're calling it the battle of our fine feathered friends, the Magpies and the Roosters. Welcome back to Leichhardt for this fourth quarter final, and Graham Annesley is the man with the whistle for tonight's encounter. Quite a good crowd on hand here, too, to see. The Roosters and the Magpies do battle, and of course the ultimate right to play in the semi-final against uh, Balmain. So Rod Petherbridge is the first of the black and whites to get a touch, and tackled on his own 22. It's Craig Ellis. Hubert. And a penalty for inside the five against Eastern Suburbs. Rod Petherbridge taking the, the line finder, and of course he played with the Tigers for a number of years. So like I wouldn't present any problems to him. That was very close to being offside. That's Ellis now. Schubert playing against many of his old mates from eastern suburbs. This is Crooks. McGahn in the number nine tonight. Very deep back line. And it's paid dividends. Petheridge is a try. Oh, goodness gracious me. He seemed to have two centres unmarked. And he gave it to another centre who had the wrong colour jumper off. If you look at this on the replay, any one of four players could have received this pass. Three of them were from Western Suburbs. And one of them was from East. And he came up with the ball. Well, holy smokes. West were in to score, there was absolutely no betting. This is Leggett. McGahn. Long ball. And a jolting tackle. A kick that was pressured on the fall, off the boot of Horry Hastings, and the scrum to go down just inside the eastern suburbs 22. The Magpies, Brett Clark will feed. What we should have in our hands tonight is a very exciting game. Both of these teams have got plenty to play for, but they both play an open toss style of football. Cogger. Oh, that was a case of catch and pass. The almost backfired Cogger to play it that's Dylan and another scrum to go down down on the east 32 meter line what a strong breeze appears to be coming up from behind west and you'd be feeling just about 
very much like an Eskimo at the moment, Graham, I would think. A very cold night. Well, it is nice and cold down here on the ground. West, of course, can't afford to lose early opportunities like that one with Petherys End, nor can they afford these handling areas, errors because this breeze is exceptionally strong, would have to be worth at least 10 or 12 points to them. That'd be what the, the Magpies coach Steve Gosh will be looking at in this first half, and they can then hang on in the second spell uh, against an eastern suburbs pack who seems to uh, hold the advantages in that area, and that's where East uh, should be playing this game tonight. Well, West have come up with the football. I've got to say that East should have been on the end of the penalty. Brad Tasman was trying to run as a supporter to the ball carrier. He was interfered with, and it was more than just coincidental. The ball had to come back in the direction of Tessman, and he wasn't there, thanks to a Western Suburbs player. It went unchecked, however, as Ian Naden is tackled now. The ball goes to the blind side. And Dylan it is through McFarlane. Quick hands. And this is Paul Sheehan. Can he go all the way? He falls just one metre short on tackle number five. The ball swept away to Clark. He holds it back. He kicks. That might be enough for the doctor the way. Yes! That's just what the doctor ordered. A try to Alan Geelan. And the black and whites have picked up a try. Beautifully engineered. Foster's Lager replay. He held back on the kick and it was enough to suck the Eastern Suburbs three quarters forward and then it was left to Gehlen to touch down. Brett Clark read this very well. He probed firstly by coming across field. There was nothing on so he put through the grubber kick and of course the winger Gehlen did the rest. There's another angle of it. He gave his outside backs every opportunity. Alan Geelan, the, the try scorer, he's seen plenty of clubs. And Lee Crooks takes the attempted conversion. Easy for Crooks. And six points to nil. West leading East after six minutes. You want to know why National's the big entertainer in video? Take a look. Melrose restarting. This is McFarlane. A couple of these tackle attempts by Eastern Suburbs have left a lot to be desired. Ooh. What Eastern Finally Suburbs cleaned up. What Easts aren't doing is getting their defence set quickly enough. Western Suburbs taking the ball up to them, getting their play the balls in very quickly. And you can see it here. Some of the East defence is still going back while West have got the ball rolling. Here's Crooks. It's Dylan, the number nine. Clark, and he's found touch just on his own side of the halfway. I'm just wondering what tackle that was, in fact. Well, East have been giving the feed, which suggests that it was the last tackle. Just explaining that, of course, if it was one of the first four tackles and of course uh, West would have in fact come up with the feed not the loose but the feed this is Melrose across to McGahn short ball delightful delightful pass too and tackled is Gary Worth this is Simpkins Melrose Switching the point of the attack back to the blind for Brown and then a little handoff and eventually picked up by Brad Tessman, but the referee has ruled that the ball went forward. A lot of the Eastern Suburbs attack has been turned back down the blind side, so no doubt Bootson has identified a weakness in West, West defence there. This is Gary Prome, who arrived only at three o'clock this afternoon from New Zealand. He came from England, of course, back via New Zealand. He'd been a Kiwi international of many, many uh, years now. 
He played with Hull KR and scored two tries in the cup final. This is Willie Williams. He played with East last year. Oh, that pass looked fractionally forward to Dillon. Now it's Clark, and they're coming up in numbers. Oh, well, Rod Petheridge, Petheridge yeah. is taken out of the play by an Eastern Suburbs player. He, he looked like he was going to receive a pass, but he didn't, and he screamed at the touch judge for a penalty. Well, Graham, you were sitting right on top of it. Well, there was no way in the world that uh, the Eastern Suburbs player there played anybody else but the man, and uh, I'm quite surprised. It did happen right in front of the touch judge on this uh, grandstand uh, sideline, and it certainly should have been a penalty to Western Suburbs. Melrose, not quite, not quite hearing the call, I would anticipate. McGahn to Spina. Spina getting away from the tackle from Ian Naden, but now he's given a penalty. Shepherding is the call. Is the action. And the referee ruling obstruction. The pace this game's being played at, I'm sure that both sets of players will appreciate the fact they're going to get a break after every 20 minutes because it's a it's a red hot speed. Grand fight. Well, oh. this has got to be a penalty. He's penalised East, he's penalised Dean Bell. He's saying to him, you're either in or you're out. Make up your mind. But you can't stand midway between them. He got him on that count. I know Bill was about to suggest that maybe the West player um, was the man that infringed. But uh, he got Bell on the first count. And so the tap is to be taken by five. He, I was about to make the point of it. He's going to have to hurry these taps up. He taps it. He seems to take an age to stand up and give the ball. You don't have to stand up. You pass it from the ground. But he's taking that extra couple of tenths of a second. It's putting players off. Clark inside the 22. In and around. That's ball down by Gary Wirt. Oh, he's a good player, this kid, Brett Clark. Trevor Cobb has got the ball, but now he's given a penalty to East for not raking the ball back with his foot. That's all I can imagine from the indication the referee is giving. There's the score, 6-0 in favour of the Magpies. Melrose taking the kick. This is Brown. Hastings. Spina, Batiste, went behind McGahn, scooped up. East is showing a willingness to push the ball, but inside your own court is not the place to try it. This is Dillon. 20 metres out from the line, here's a penalty to West. Against the East defenders, for not releasing the tackled player. So Crooks has got an, a fairly difficult attempt, it's out about 12 metres in from touch. He's chosen to take it back outside the 22. A game being played at a furious pace. Lee Crooks. Breeze coming, I would think, from a, a good angle for him. His team leading 6-0 at the moment. Bruiser Clark is watching on our sideline camera. This should bring a smile to his face if he kicks it. In the air, looks OK. He's got it. Good kick by Lee Crooks. And eight points.
points to nil in favour of the Magpies. Is Bruiser smiling or what, Graham? Well, he's got a big smile on his face at the moment, but uh, he's a little bit unhappy in some circumstance. Bruce, you just come back with that foot injury for Western Suburbs, and now I believe uh, you're just out, fresh out of hospital tonight for the game. What's the reason behind that? Uh, yes, I've been very lucky. The doctors let me out for a couple of hours. I've got to go back to hospital uh, after the game. At the moment, I've got a stomach problem, uh, which I'm having more tests in the morning. Um, all week this week I've been having tests and I still haven't found out what's wrong. Uh, but hopefully tomorrow they will. Canterbury Hospital, wrong territory. <laughs> yes, mate. Uh, the nurses there, they've been looking after me pretty well. They've been rubbing it in there at Canterbury Hospital from a Western Suburbs player. But it's been very good in there and uh, I'm sure they'll look after us. Well, Bruce, uh, Western Suburbs tonight, a, a gale behind them in these first two quarters. How many points do they need by half time? Well, I think they've got to at least be 10 to 12 points up in front. But the way they're going, you know, they're running very well and uh, they're playing very, very well at the moment. All right, thanks for joining us. Good luck with those tests. Thanks very much. Well, Western Suburbs are really giving a polished exhibition of the tap football. They haven't been asked to do any defending. There's Crooks finding the line down on the 22. Uh, one of the reasons that West are looking so good in attack is because they're not coming up one out. They're coming up in numbers, twos and threes, and everybody wants the ball. They're almost knocking each other out of the road to get their hands on it. It's amazing, no matter what standard of football it is, enthusiasm is probably the most important ingredient, and they've got plenty of that tonight. This is the winger, Ben. All right, with Easts in possession, back inside their own 22, let's check the footy tab pool. And uh, the popular forecast from you people out there was John Croucher. Uh, yes, Ray, the dividend pool tonight is a season record $40,000. And while only 40% of the entries feel that West can win this, they've made the most popular score, Western Suburbs 18, Eastern Suburbs 12. That might be a bit difficult for us people lacking in mathematics to work out. But there it is. This popular score 18-12 to West, even though only 40% think they'll win. Now, this will bring a penalty against Grant Fivey, the number 12, in the side for Alan Faller. The Fosters replay. Fivey, oh yeah, got a cheap shot in at the finish. And uh, Melrose it is who takes the tap. This is Brown. Now Tessman. And they're fanned out very deep to the blind side. Here it is to the blind now. And the rose, and then they take it back to the open side. And it's Bennett who's put down. Melrose. McGahn. Spina. Spina. Ooh, good tackle by by the shoe. Ian Schubert. Hastings. Left foot chip taken by Sheehan. Looking at the national superstar points earlier tonight. Brett Clark, if he takes out the man of the match here, would go to the lead. Ray Price currently leads on five. In front of Des Hasler, four. And then a line of three pointers. Sterling, Clark, Shearer and Gilmeister. But Brett Clark could take the outright lead with the man of the match award tonight. One of the problems East are having in their defence is they're not finishing tackles off. They're getting to the Western Suburbs players, but there's no one coming over the top to stop the ball. Again. Now it's Gary Worth. He'll go all the way. Yes! Gary Worth scores for Eastern Suburbs. Well, up until this point in the match, Western Suburbs had been having an absolute picnic.
but the big New Zealander McGahn got rid of three of them and he stood in the fourth before putting Gary Worth inside the 22 and momentum took him across, not a double movement. And here's McGahn again showing some of his brilliance out of dummy half and the ability to absorb tackles. We were just talking about Eastern Suburbs not finishing tackles off and then it was Western Suburbs turn to do the same thing. McGahn capitalised on that, slipped a pass to Worth and he was of course able to carry it on and score a very good try. Here's the try scorer on camera with the Raiders there for a couple of seasons. He's a brilliant player, Gary Worth. And Hugh McGahn, the man whose name probably should appear in the record books. He certainly made it. Tony Melrose. Rugby Union International. kick. Eight points to six now in favour of Western Suburbs as we draw very close to quarter time. Glenn Leggett taking it back. Bell. Brown. Simpkins standing and getting it back to Tessman. Simpkins, formerly from the South Sydney Club. Melrose, his kick will not find touch. And this is Geelan in possession for Western Suburbs. And that's the end of the quarter. And certainly an exciting one in many respects with Western Suburbs leading Eastern Suburbs by two points. Here's a break, and then we're back. In favour of the Magpies as we come into the second quarter with some rain starting to tumble down. And uh, a good crowd on the hill now heading for what space there is in the grandstands. The National Panasonic in its 13th year. You're watching the fourth quarter final being played between the two teams that started it all back in 1974. It was raining that night at Belmore. I'll never forget it. I think there was a director, the crew, a couple of commentators, and very few other people. And they started at 9 o'clock. Fellows like Mark Harris and John Brass were playing with East that night. Ron Coote. This is Brett Clark, taken to ground by Kevin Hastings. Schubert. Charge down for Holly Hastings. This is play on. 18 metres from the line. Fullback has come up to make a tackle, so there must be an opening at the back. Tessman having a wrestle for the ball. Crooks, the man who went for the charge down and put Western Suburbs in a panic area, was the man who came up with it. This breeze, as Graham described earlier, is quite strong. West, of course, didn't really need to use it very much in the first 20 minutes, Graham, did they? 
Well, they didn't, although they learned. I thought they would have learnt their lesson uh, by that East try just prior to the uh, end of the first quarter. This is crazy football. A big breeze at their backs, and for the second set of six tackles in a row, they're now, they've now waited for the fifth on their own quarter line to kick. Last time it got charged down, and they were lucky that it wasn't another Eastern Suburbs try on the board. Steve Goshen repeated those tactics to them in the break at the end of the first quarter, and then, as yet, they've gone unheeded. Ball being played by Worth on the halfway. That's French. Both of these sides are fairly similar. Their, their defence is, is not is not great defence. It's defence that's effective, but uh, but it's not powerhouse defence. And as far as their attacks concerned, they play off the cuff, spontaneous type football rather than pattern football. But I feel the side that can get some sort of discipline in their attack and control the ball will be the team that will win this match. Hastings getting some attention back down the ground as Spina crosses the 32. He got away from a shoulder charge from Crooks, and I'm being kind to him and calling it that. Five tackles gone. Melrose goes for the drop shot, but it's wide, and it'll come out to the 22 for the tap to restart. In big league out today, Max Krillich slams the city selectors. Rich Gaznia says the Bulldog pack is the best for 20 years. There's an eight-page special on the city country fixtures, and Paul Voughton predicts a 3-0 whitewash to Queensland in the State of Origin series. It's all out rather controversially this week in Big League. Dylan, there's the scrums and penalties after about 22 minutes of time. This is Crooks. Be dreaming, but he seemed to start the, the match um, like an explosion just occurring. But he's not taking it up with any gusto now. And a couple of his tackles have been timid shoulder charges. Maybe it's condition that is uh, at the moment proving Lee Crooks's biggest enemy. Dave Brown being spoken to by the referee, acting on a touch judge report. Touch judge must have seen something that time. He obviously failed to see something in the first 20 minutes that happened right in front of him. A penalty to East, and here they go. I saw one go from grass level. Most of the boys in there mauling around are trying to separate the combatants. Now, Graham, you almost took a right hook yourself. Well, there's plenty being exchanged here. But this goes back to the first quarter where Dave Brown had words with uh, the Western Suburbs hooker, Grant Fivey, on a couple of occasions. And he, uh, he was reported for a tackle and also having words with uh, Jeff Dillon. Uh, from Western Suburbs by the touch judge. And I think it was Fivey and, uh, and Dylan thought to Dave Brown, well, we better start settling this score right here and now. So there's Dave Brown and Grant Fivey trying to sort things out. Fivey. Fivey's built very close to the ground, and Dave Brown would be the biggest man on the paddock. And a penalty goes to Eastern Suburbs. Have a look at Fivey. He's only uh, only a small fellow. <laughs> and he took on Dave Brown, who'd be probably a foot taller and three stone heavier. There's David. Talk about David and Goliath. David and Grant. <laughs> Ball played by Robert Simpkins. Now it's Brian Batiste. Working with Tessman. Just the two points separating them. 8-6 in favour of the Magpies. Eastern, Eastern Suburbs, as indicated by that run, run by Yuma Garn, are making too many metres out of dummy half. Every time they've gone out of there, they've had West going backwards. Bennett. It's an ordinary attempt by Sheehan the first time. He got in the second. Five gone. Melrose. A very high up and under. It's going up and down in the one spot. 
This is Brown. He's ordered six more tackles. I thought that came off Kevin Hastings, who in fact was so far offside, he was shaking hands with the West players when the ball was kicked. Now it's gone across to Hastings. This is Dean Bell. We're starting to fall off far too much defence, both in the marker area and out wide. They're making their job very difficult now. Batiste, eight metres from the line. Through Spina, or through to him. Back now for McGann. Out the back it goes to the ground, and Tessman has it, but it's a knock-on. Spina it was, who got the ball back to McGann. He had to hurdle his teammate. And then, did you see that replay? As McGann unloaded it, a West player coming in to make the tackle actually came in contact with it and raked it forward. I know it's easy to sit here and it's easy for us people at home to watch it on TV and see it. But in fact there, the tackle count more than likely should have been restarted. He's getting a penalty now. to six. Another scrum just inside the West 22. playing magnificent football this year. I just had the feeling he's lifted himself against his old club tonight. He's got that happy ability, Williams, of being able to just push himself through the line. He's an explosive runner. Now, Sunday telecast for NEC will be the match between Manly and Canterbury. Last week, we were talking about the game of the year. And having seen it, I'm starting to think that maybe this one on Sunday is, in fact, the game of the year. And on Sunday, East play Balmain at the Parramatta Stadium. As East win the scrum, the crowd not happy with the, uh, the scrum feed. As Dean Bell is put down, Williams hit him with a couple of high tackles. They, I think, were rather exaggerated by Williams being the smaller of the two, trying to put his man down. Have a look at it again. He went in for one shot, he couldn't get his arms around him, and ooh, exaggerated. You're kidding, Ray. Just as well it didn't connect, Dean Bell would have been looking for more than just makeup. Melrose taking the line kick. Yes, East play Balmain on Sunday at Parramatta Stadium. And a thousand free train tickets are waiting for you East supporters at East Leagues Club. One thousand free train tickets as Melrose knocks on, oh dear. So you can go to the Leagues Club, pick up your ticket and find out the time of the train leaving the junction and central if you like. And let me applaud East for doing what they're doing this Sunday. Parramatta's playing south at Redfern. There's a rules match at the cricket ground. So with the sports ground under repair, they've decided to, to put it bluntly, buzz off. They've taken the game west. West with the ball. Petherbridge met that time by Tony Melrose. 
Now it's Schubert. That's Williams. Across, and then he tries to bust them. He's a strong little fellow, and he's got a lot of speed. And he's worked up a combination, particularly with Petherbridge, the fullback. That's McFarlane. Naden. Crooks. That's not good play by West. They took the two play the balls to the other sideline. They then brought it back to play the balls to this sideline, but they haven't made any forward progress. Crooks with a forward pass to Ellis. And a penalty goes to Eastern Suburbs. Score. 8-6 to West. What's going on here? Graham, it's happening next to you. The referee has told the Eastern Suburbs trainer that unless anybody's down on the deck uh, claiming to be injured, at least uh, he can't go onto the field. He's simply only being used as a messenger, but, you know, this, this has been going on for weeks. I, I can't see any point being made by the referees or the touch judges on it. In fact, if I was Steve Gosh and I'd be using the tactic myself to get a message out to Lee Crooks, again to repeat the claim that West should be using this breeze. We've had something like 13 or 14 minutes of this quarter gone, and we haven't once been inside the Eastern Suburbs 22. This is Brown. Now Spina. Oh, good ball. Melrose. Then back to Gary Worth. Two beautiful passes there. One from Spina, one from Melrose. Spina backing up on Hastings. Wests. Desperately defending their own line. McGahn floats it into the open space. Batiste over the top. Taken by Geelan. This is Clark. Let's see how many times they are inclined to ruck it out this time. A penalty to West. East inside the five. Just a reminder to you people going to the sports centre at Newcastle for Saturday's city country matches. Uh, it's only a minor thing, but if you have got a pair of binoculars, take them with you because you could find yourself a long, long way from the action and the old binoculars will come in very handy. Let me give you a written guarantee. This is Schubert. He's blowing about something, Ian Schubert. What's he complaining about, Graham? Well, Schubert's claiming that it was a, a little bit of a late tackle after he's already uh, had hit the ground, but uh, Schubert's uh, suffering from a bad gash on his cheekbone, if we can get a look at that shortly. What are you saying? He's, he's seeing, seeing double or not seeing correctly? <laughs> well, I think he's having trouble to see. He's got plenty of blood over the bar. We just had a shot of it as you were speaking. They're giving this touch judge on your side plenty to go on with. Here's McFarlane. That's called a Clayton's kick. Tessman. Spina, Melrose, McGahn, the full back into the line, Worth. Picked up by Maiden, given to Crooks, quickly away to Sheehan. Melrose has got him, and into touch. That was good defence by Melrose. He showed Sheehan the sideline side. He took the option, Sheehan. He thought he could get around him, but Melrose had too much pace. Collared him just over the 22 and pulled him over the sideline. game tonight. Nobody's ever ever doubted the attacking ability of Laurie Spina, even when he was with North Sydney. He was a fine player. Now, first semi-final of the Cup comes up next Wednesday between Parramatta and Manly. 
So a very busy schedule for players from both those clubs. Rep football Saturday, club football Sunday, cup Wednesday, and then the following week they're looking down the barrel of state of origin. But let me remind both clubs that St George undertook a similar fate with the cup this year and quite willingly didn't, uh, didn't help them in the long run i appreciate that hastings a hard tackle he's coughed it up ellis has it for west crooks schubert West are looking to spread the ball in situations where it's just not on. It's OK to hit your back line with the ball, but you can't do that until you're going forward first. What all West are doing is spinning the ball from one side to the other and getting nowhere. Ball to be played by Dillon. Petherbridge. Twelve handling errors for East, half as many for West. Which doesn't really mean very much. And comes back down to who's had the ball for the longest period of time. Cogger, who played with that league club uh, that John Henderson comes from. Now it's Maiden. If Wests need any reassurance as to uh, where they've found the gaps, it's most definitely been off Willie Williams and around the centres with the fullback coming in. And as Bill has said, they've got to go forward a couple and then let these little centres and the big full-back do the rest because they've got some absolutely brilliant backs. These crooks. There's no doubt they can find holes against the East defence just out on the fringe of the ruck, but they've got to be going forward before they can do it. They'll be looking for their two front rowers, Crooks and Ellis, to hit the ball up for them before they spread it. Clark's kick finding the line about 30 metres out from the Eastern Suburbs line as we come up very close to half-time. show you the try from last week's match that has been judged as the, the Golden Try nomination. West coming up with the ball against the feed, a chance to spread it to the right. This is Geelan. Well, that's a good run by Geelan. He's made 10 metres, a quick play of the ball. They need another one of those. Now it's Dillon. That's better. Now they've made 20 metres. Ellis. In defence. Ellis to the 10 metre line. They're right in the middle of the ground. Now they can spread the ball. Clark. This is Williams. Holding it back. Skipping into a hole. And he gives it to Bennett, the winger from Eastern Suburbs. Williams getting it around the back. Picked up by Bennett for Eastern Suburbs. West didn't come up with a, with a try from that passage of play, but maybe they learnt something. They used a kick, they got the ball down to East Territory, they then won a scrum, they took a couple of hard hit-ups, spread the ball, and almost came up with a reward. But there's the siren now sounding, the end of the first half, and Western Suburbs continue to lead, though they'll come out with the breeze in their face in the second half. They're leading by eight points to six. Here's a break and back with more National Panasonic Cup in just a moment. And Western Suburbs leading by eight points to six. East coach Arthur Beetson, I'm sure, would be or would have been saying at half time, we must play the game in their territory. And I was reminiscing about the Cup in 74 when it started that very first night, and Arthur Beetson, of course, was playing that night for Eastern Suburbs. Well, he'll have the luxury in this second half of having two kickers in his side in the form of Tony Melrose and Kevin Hastings. And that option of being able to hit either of them with a the ball and have either drive it downfield is going to be a thorn in West Side. McGann. 111 tackles for East in the first half, 93 for West, and Hastings with 17. Topped it for the Tricolors. This is Bennett. Interesting to see how many plays they actually take East. This is Tessman. Now Hastings. And that's off the outside edge of the boot from Melrose. It's bounced favourably, though, for him. 
over the head of uh, the west winger Paul Sheehan and the scrum is to go down just on the west side of halfway it wasn't exactly the kick that Tony Melrose was looking for he got a bad pass from the dummy half and that's all that was required to put him off his kicking game West the penalty against Simpkins for feet across. There he is in the headgear, Robert Simpkins. I was talking about him earlier. I, from memory, I think he came from Emmerville, the, the hometown of um, Debbie Wells. Debbie Wells, the Emmerville Express. Well, there's Fivey again, the number 12. He's, he's been given the job of taking the taps. Admittedly, he's got called into the team late. But through his own lateness of giving the pass, I'm not joking, this referee could have pinched them at least twice in the match so far for a forward pass from the man taking the tap to the first runner. Here's Crooks. Well, that ball has gone forward, I do believe, and picked up by Bennett. Solid tackle by Fivey on Gary Worth. Hurt him too. A little bloke that decided to mix it with uh, Dave Brown in the second quarter. Making a very solid tackle on Worth then. And as I said, it stung him. Melrose. Hastings. Well, there you have the, the luxury of the two kickers. Melrose was caught in a tackle when he tried to get a clearing kick in. He played the ball, and the ball went back to Hastings, who was able to carry the job on. This is Petherbridge. Now Sheehan. Crooks. Sheehan. Clark, Schubert, Schubert, a good fend and he got away from Brian Batiste, he's over the 22, and a beautiful tackle by Gary Worth, Clark, Ellis, knocked down by Clark, Schubert with a fend on Brian Batiste was off and running. He actually got a he got a ricochet off the fend, a push off, and then Gary Worth with a, a tremendous fullback tackle. Spina, a one-handed pass to Dean Bell. Simpkins. Spina. McGahn. It's the centre, Glenn Leggett. Hastings. Melrose. Five tackles gone for Easts. Worth. His kick sitting up for Alan Geelan, the West try scorer. And uh, held over there by French. Now it's Clark. Crooks. Out the back for Fivey. in the ground there by Hastings and Brown and it's a penalty to West against Hastings <laughs> the poor little hooker was trying to play the ball and all Hastings wanted to do was put him back on the on the deck Ellis It's Dylan. Clark. 
Cogger. Back to Clark. Cogger through Williams. Terrible pass. And it's going to be a scrum as the ball was projected forward. Seven minutes gone, third quarter. And again, West have won it against the feed, but the referee is giving a penalty to East. Well, he's penalised East for going down in the scrum. Strong run by Brad Tessman. This is Batiste. Knocked down by West. Six more. Played by Spina. Melrose. Brown. Bell. Simpkins. Hastings, Bell, held out there by Williams. Five tackles gone for the Roosters. Melrose, that came off the leg of a West player. So Clark, that was, that was a crazy piece of football. Melrose drops the ball to kick it, and Clark comes in and knees the ball before it gets onto Melrose's boot. That was a almost like a soccer tackle, wasn't it? Thought for a moment my eyes were playing tricks, but that's exactly what happened. And of course, never could it be classified as a knock-on. Coming off the knees of Brett Clark. Here's Peter Bridge. Now, Willie Williams! Williams! 5 That's Sheehan! Sheehan! from the line. Oh, the ball has been lofted. Clark shoulders off a would-be. He's almost over the line. That's the turnover. Heavens to Betsy. I thought for a moment that the Magpies were sailing to the semi-finals with all of this. It all started, of course, with the break made out wide by Rod Petherbridge and then he turned it into Willie Williams. I said to you earlier, that's where East are having most trouble. They're having trouble containing Williams when he combines with Petherbridge. It's been their most dangerous play and it's been shown on at least three or four occasions. Why they don't keep pumping the ball out there is beyond me. 8-6, the Magpies leading. Played by... Bennett. Well, Eastern Suburbs have got to try something, and the, the Western Suburbs defensive line is, is holding them at this stage, but their fullback Rod Petherbridge is particularly deep waiting for the kick, and it may well be if East can get the ball, say, out to their quarter line, they could try a chip kick over the top. They've got plenty of space to work in. This is Brown. Williams wrestling with him. Batiste. Nice cutout pass to Bell. Leggett's with it now. Melrose clearing. Ball landing inside the 22. A bad bounce for Petherbridge. Melrose is down injured. Uh, not Melrose, Batiste getting some attention for East. Sheehan.
Jalen. Clark. Crooks. That's McFarlane. Crooks again. Oh, that had a big question mark on of that pass from Crooks. Referees ruled that it went forward. No question about it. And as the scrum packs down, the man with Graham Hughes knows something about this area of the game. Alan Fowler, the West hooker. Alan, the side certainly put a lot of pressure on themselves uh, by not kicking that second quarter. Yeah, um, I think Steve wanted them to kick a bit earlier than they were kicking, uh, preferably before the fifth tackle. You know, putting a lot of pressure on themselves by waiting until the fifth tackle. Well, you're becoming somewhat of a national Panasonic specialist. The side obviously wanted to hang in there with all that money. Oh, for sure, yeah, we need it. <laughs> Alan, a question I, I want to put to you. When are critics going to not call a Western Suburbs victory an upset? Um, I don't think they ever will. It doesn't uh, seem to matter how well we go, we always seem to be... Uh, any win we seem to have seems to be an upset win. Uh, I think uh, once, we be, once we become a bit more consistent, uh, I think we'll, we'll lose that tag. OK, you're out with an ankle injury. When will you be back? Uh, Sunday, I hope. OK, thanks, Alan. Good luck. Thanks, mate. Here's Dave Brown playing strongly and taking the play to within 15 metres of the line. Five gone. Here's Hastings to Melrose. He gets the up and under, in and across. Petherbridge, oh, yes! He's put the ball down and McGarn has come through to score. Well, I was about to suggest that Petherbridge had learned his trade well. Here's the Foster's Lager replay. He came down. McGann was there. The ball rolled simply under his arms. And the New Zealander can't believe his luck. You could never doubt Petherbridge's courage, the way he went up for this ball. He appeared to have taken it cleanly, but it was when he impacted the ground. When his hit back hit the turf, the ball popped through. Hugh McGarn was minding his own business and fell on it for the try. So McGarn has played a major part in this Eastern Suburbs lead. Ten points to eight. He was the man who stood after beating at least two tackles and offloaded to Worth for the try and now picks up on himself. Melrose taking the attempted conversion of a slightly controversial try which has now been converted. 12 points to eight in favour of the Roosters. But for my money, McGann was in front of the kicker. A change for East, Graham? Yes, you call Brian Batiste going down before in back play prior to that try. He has a shoulder problem, and Jim Harvey's going on for Eastern Suburbs in place of him in number 14. There's a spinner. Jim Harvey, the man on. The Dunbar Hotel, you see, there is a junior league Eastern Suburbs <laughs> in 1984. Don't, don't think that he resided with the Dunbar Hotel. That was the, the football team. As Hastings drives this ball deep into Magpie's territory. Petherbridge. Schubert. It's Ellis. Clark. Crooks. Brown to play it. Crook's trying to do too much with the ball. He's got great skills at offloading in the tackle, but you can't do it every time. Solid tackle on the new boy, Harvey. Tessman. Uh, 
Hastings looking for the drop goal. And it's a goal, I do believe, yes. A further point to Eastern Suburbs. Here's how easy Horry Hastings makes it look. He seemed to have an age to line it up and put it straight over the middle. 13 points to eight in favour of East. About four minutes before three-quarter time. A sideline comment, Graham Hughes. Well, that just backs up what uh, Bruce Clark said in our first interview in that, uh, early on in that first quarter when the injured Western Suburbs skipper said that he was looking for a 10 or 12-point lead uh, come half-time. Eastern Suburbs in this last five or six minutes have started to show Western Suburbs how they should have played the game in the uh, second quarter. This breeze is even starting to pick up a little bit more now in this uh, late in this third quarter. Eastern Suburbs shouldn't be playing any more football down here. We should see a kick in the next one or two tackles. And, of course, in the fourth quarter, look for uh, Tony Melrose and Kevin Hayes Hastings to dominate the last 20 minutes. Melrose. This is Petherbridge. solid foundation to work off tonight or they have had the eastern suburbs in the shape of the 11 and the 13 Tessman and Brown they've both played particularly strong McGann Melrose is going for another one and that one's offline No change, 13 points to eight. <laughs> Fivey unable to play the ball. seconds from the third quarter siren Cogger tackled by Simpkins McFarlane the West can try all they like in the middle of the ground kicking into the into the teeth of this wind is is out they've got to spread the ball to the centers that's where they've had their main thrust this little bike has had a magnificent game williams five tackles gone clark cogger crooks cuts out schubert mcfarlane was way out there this is Geelan, and he's put it down for Eastern Suburbs to come up with it. This is Dean Bell. Simpkins. West should be thinking about the little chip over the top. Maybe the grubber kick, something to break East up with. They're going to have to do it the hard way. Hastings 
This is French. He's now playing in the centres, and it would seem that Leggett has gone out to the wing. Now it's Bennett. There's the siren sounding, the end of the third quarter, and a hell of a lot of work in front of the Magpies in the final 20 minutes. They're trailing 13 to 8. Let's get some details on the National Panasonic Superstar Prize. It's absolutely fantastic. And here to tell you about it, Victoria Nickel. 13 points to 8 in favour of the Roosters over the Magpies. Gary Prohm is on for Eastern Suburbs and Leggett has been replaced. And the Magpies also have made a change, have they not, Graham? Yes, John Henderson is on in uh, in 16, uh, is out there on the wing for Western Suburbs, and Alan Gillen has come from the wing into the second row. Bennett. I hope West have got their charge down game in order. That might be an answer for them. This is Tessman. Where they're often falling down with their charge down is that they, they're getting forwards in at second marker and the forwards haven't got the pace to get out and get pressure. What they've got to do is get their half back into second marker so he can scurry out of there quickly and hassle the Eastern Suburbs kickers. Petherbridge. And this is John Henderson at dummy half. Hubert. Picked up by Clark. He's an elusive little player. It's Dylan. Ellis. Kick finding the line about five meters into East Territory. Defense, the Western Suburbs were found wanting. Spina. East. Well and truly with West on the ropes now. Hastings. 14 is Gary Prom. Eastern Suburbs looking as if they can put this one out of doubt. This is Melrose. West players getting attention all over the place. The half and the hooker. Both down. Hastings sets up the drop goal and he gets another one. Two drop goals from two attempts for Kevin Hastings. And 14 points to eight the score. He makes it look very simple. And there's no enthusiasm. Maybe there's no petrol left in the Western Suburbs market defence. West making a change. Yes, with well, the Englishman uh, Derek Fox in 15 has found himself on the field uh, for Brett Clark. Uh, Clark could probably feel himself a little bit unlucky. Uh, Ray, I, I would believe that Brett's one of their most dangerous players. I haven't seen any of this Englishman. Uh, West also making a, another change uh, in 14. Terry Donnellan has uh, moved to the sideline, as yet haven't got that one. Graham, if you're going to bring Fox on, surely you could find a place for Clark somewhere in the back line. Well, we hear so all year round how Brett Clark has possibly uh, been one of Western Suburbs' best players. It's a little bit hard to understand. I, I know that uh, Steve Goshen has moved Alan Gillen into the second row from the wing when he could have easily brought uh, Alan Burns on as a replacement. Uh, as we all know, Alan Gillen's a very dangerous runner and he's obviously looking for him to pick up some sort of a half break in and around and closer to the rucks. Simpkins. Prom. 
So the ball coming out to the 22 for the restart. So more changes, Graham. Well, this time John Henderson in 16 for Grant Fivey and uh, Alan Burns has found his way out there in 17 uh, for Jeff Dellen. And uh, obviously these guys are very tired. This, as I said, late in the third quarter, this breeze has even picked up to what it was at the start of the match. It's very, very strong now. And, and they're up against it, Western Suburbs, and obviously the Western Suburbs forwards needing a rest. A lot of workers out there. Well, this is Alan Burns now to play it. from Crooks is out on the fall. So nothing's going right now for the Magpies. But East, to their credit, they've used the breeze to its, to its advantage. They've kept the pressure on Wests and are now leading by 14 points to eight. This is Gary Prom. McGann. Spina. They might even have another shot here to get them seven points out of range. Brown. Short ball for Simpkins. Simpkins. Can he go through the way? But he can't. Tessman a dummy half. He's lost it, and it's West with the ball. Danellan in 14. Petherbridge. Strong run by Rod Petherbridge. Fox. playing it. Donnell on the dummy half. Through to Naden. Back to Williams. Tackled by Harvey and by Hastings. Crooks. Ellis. It came off an East player. If West have got it, will a knock on. Ellis was dollying around with the ball. In fact, he passed the ball forward. Came in contact with an East player and then came back. And there was a chance there for West. But Ellis it was who didn't quite seem to know what was going on around him. And a penalty to West. Feed across against Robert Simpkins. from Cogger to Fox and this is Galen Fox Williams Burns Fox Cogger Petherbridge East have it. That's French. Spina. West the penalty. Crooks. Yeah. 
Fox, Williams, Cogger. Oh, good tackle by Simpkins. Ten minutes of the third, the final quarter to go. Williams from dummy half. Naden, his centre partner. Trailing 14 points to eight. The Magpies with their, well, one of their last throws of the dice. You can't afford to feel comfortable again against West when you've got a six-point lead, purely because the way they play football with this, uh, this ad-lib type play, they could score a length of... Henderson! Henderson with a big run down the left flank. Five gone for the Magpies. East getting back onside. Petter Bridge kicks over the top. Spina takes it for East. the bridge with a little chip he got a hand to it the converted try to west would see them more than likely run out the winners they're leading the penalty count 14-8 east leading with about nine minutes to go in the rugged kimberleys steve hardy has gone on Crowd, crowd giving Dave Brown something for his corner. Obviously West supporters and probably remembering the encounter with the little hooker from, from West, Grant Fivey. But uh, by the same token, the big prop has given it his all here tonight. Little play by Gary Prome. Brad, Brad Tessman now. And what West need here is a mistake. West have received 11 penalties to East 8. This is Hardy. And that's Melrose. It's a good bounce for Melrose. It's pushed that ball to almost 85, 90 metres. Sheehan pulled down by Bell and Bennett. Naden. 11 8 the penalty count to West. It's more like it from West. Good quick play the balls. Oh, yes, they've got a chance. Geelan, Geelan to the halfway. Oh, I think he should have used Henderson. Across to Cogger. Now to Williams. Willie Williams. Ball loose. No six tackles, recount. Schubert over the top to Sheehan. Outside the 22. By the uh, by just two metres. Five tackles gone, says the ref. As uh, Fox puts up a kick. Oh, Petherbridge! Petherbridge has floated the ball out. Geelan can't pick it up. Crooks picks it up. He spins the ball out wide. Picked up by Henderson. Henderson. Ten metres out. That's a turnover. Heavens above. Do you reckon this match hasn't come alive all of a sudden? Arthur Beetson sitting just next to her here on the camera deck. He has nearly gone over the top of the stand with, with that break by Western Suburbs. Harvey. Prom is pointing to the West player saying it came off his feet. Donnellan comes out in 14, the hooker to have a talk to Derek Fox. He's probably introduced himself and said, just put it to the back of my heels. Give me a chance. A pommy hooker. Fancy telling him how to feed the ball. They all put it in the second row. It's legal over there, isn't it? 17, that's Burns. Schubert. 14 points to eight. Each leading, West need a converted try, and it would be their victory on 
on the penalty count at the moment. Played by Geelam. This is Fox. Schubert. Well, what East have got to do here is play no mistake football, hold the ball for five and then drive it downfield and conversely West have got to go up quick in defence, bustle and force an error. Bell. You can see players from both sides at this point in the game from East, they're screaming at the referee, appealing for penalties. This is Hardy. Straight down to Henderson. Petherbridge. Gary Worth goes in to clean up. We can hear Arthur beats the nectar next to us singing out. We want a field goal. Tessman. Be a penalty, and it is right in front. The breeze at their back, and Melrose now more than likely will tie this game up for Eastern Suburbs. Two from two for Melrose. waiting in the semi-finals we joined by it now looks like eastern suburbs but they know they've had a game of football some puzzling referee decisions no question about that five minutes well and truly so East will go to the semi-finals to play Balmain here in a fortnight's time but haven't there been some encouraging performances from Wests that's if you can suggest for one moment that there's any encouragement to be derived out of losing a cup quarter-final which your club so desperately needed but uh, Williams in particular in the centres. I can't sing his praises highly enough. Petherbridge is chiming in from fullback. He's always been a danger. Spinner. Melrose. Tessman. French. And 
six more tackles. Tessman. Very strong performance by Brad Tessman tonight. And a little knock on there, so scrum is together. Another Eastern Suburbs player on, Graham. Uh, yes, in the last one or two minutes, Brendan Hall in 15 has uh, gone on for Dean Bell. I think if anything, uh, you take a line through this game. I think both sides are guilty of a very poor kicking plan right throughout the match. Eastern Suburbs were certainly more equipped than Western Suburbs to handle it tonight. I expected them to win by quite a few more points in this second half. And I think you've already mentioned it, Ray, that Western Suburbs, their spirit and enthusiasm is is absolutely magnificent the way they've been able to hang on and as it turned out the turning point of course is when Petherbridge leapt high and it was only the impact when he came down from that bomb uh, in that third quarter that turned the game. Ellis was cramped clutching at a hamstring in fact. Yes, uh, you know, it's a bit like you saying earlier to Alan Feller, when are the critics going to stop describing a West victory as an upset? And of course, we've used the words spirit, gallant, valiant, when they get narrowly beaten. But those words, I think, uh, are, are very accurate and very necessary as we look at this Western Suburbs performance tonight. Fellows like Brett Gale, Bruiser Clark, you can't replace them easily, nor can you replace fellows like Alan Feller easily. And uh, I must admit, I thought East would win quite handsomely tonight, but such hasn't been the case. And now with their English contingent all here, uh, I think it's a fair comment to, to suggest that West are going to create a hell of a lot of trouble for other clubs in the Winfield Cup as they make their exit from the National Panasonic Cup at the hands of Eastern Suburbs 16 to 8 Worth and McGahn the tries for East Melrose kicked three goals Hastings kicked two drop goals and for West a try by Alan Geelan and uh, Lee Crooks kicked two goals. 16 points to eight then. Eastern Suburbs going to the semi-finals to play Balmain in a fortnight. We'll take a break and come back and have a look at the National Panasonic Superstar points and the man of the match naturally in just a So Eastern Suburbs goes to the semi-finals here in a fortnight to play Balmain. Now the Superstar points as allocated by the judges and uh, one point to Wilfred Williams, two to Robert Simpkins, and three, and a very easy win, I'm led to believe, to Hugh McGahn. Here he is with Billy Anderson. Well done, you a great game, but did you expect Western Suburbs to give you such a close tussle? We were expecting a hard game like that. Uh, in fact, they came out harder than what we anticipated, especially that first quarter, they, they gave us everything. Do you think the turning point of the game was when Rod Petherbridge dropped the bomb and you were able to fall on it over the line for a try? Well, that gave us uh, the big advantage we were, we were after. It, like it gave us the lead and it gave us a bit more spirit. And uh, it showed in our defence um, in that quarter. Once again, for our man of the match, National Panasonic have provided a national video cassette recorder with infrared remote control valued at $950. Thank you, Bill. Thanks very much to uh, National Panasonic and to those responsible for selecting me. Thank you.